Hey, I'm Joseph from Munich Motor Works. Uh, this is my shop and uh, this is my first attempt at trying to do something actually practically useful on a video instead of just driving the car around the track or motorcycle around the countryside. Uh, we are working on 2002 suspension today. Uh, this is the suspension that I just got back from uh, ground control for my 1967 2002, uh, it's actually a 1600, uh, it's the 2002 chassis that everybody is familiar with. Uh, I was able to rescue a set of TII struts that had been manhandled. Uh, they're a really rare piece these days and replacements are very expensive, so when you can rescue a set from the scrap bin, I feel good about that. And then you send them away to ground control and what they do is they <clears throat> take this uh, take the existing strut tube and cut off the top section along with the factory spring cup, the larger diameter spring cup. And they weld their own spring perch onto it uh, and then put a threaded collar over the top so that you've got a uh, ride height adjustment on the bottom of the spring. This, this threaded area will uh, change the height of the perch of the spring and the ride height of the car. Uh, they weld in this reinforcement piece right here uh, and this is, all it did is a little triangulation piece from the strut tube to the hub flange. And then of course they powder coat the whole thing. Uh, it, I chose them uh, Coney Yellow. Uh, it's a classic uh, suspension color. Coney's been around for a long time. These are Coney shocks, Eibach springs with ground control custom hardware. And uh, also very neat is the ground control hybrid upper strut mount uh, which allows for both camber and caster adjustment and it is a rigid pillow ball zero deflection bushing in there with a compression damping adjustment on the top of the shock absorber uh, and then this piece goes underneath the sheet metal and this becomes your strut mount this part shows through the top of the strut tube on the car and it looks really, really neat from the top and gives you full suspension adjustability that the car did not come with. Um, when they come back from powder coat, uh, the first thing to do is to go through and clean up all the threads and everything. And so that's what I was gonna do tonight when I was getting ready to hang the suspension in the car, which will hopefully happen tomorrow or perhaps Saturday. Uh, and uh, what we're gonna do is prep this stuff for installation. And I sort of thought of doing the video as uh, I was cleaning up the stub axle threads, which there wasn't anything really wrong with them, but you know, I just go at it with a wire brush and clean the threads up. Sometimes I put a thread file on it, you test fit the thrust washer, which has a real tight keyway. Uh, let's see if we can, I'm not real good at the perspectives on this, but there's a keyway in that thrust washer that fits in a groove on the uh, stub axle. So you make sure that that all fits nice and tight and smooth and uh, just generally cleaning up all the hardware and getting it ready for assembly. Um, the, uh, I, 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 at our shop we always make sure that all the hardware is clean and in good condition before we put anything together and we go to the extra step like I'm about to do uh, when, when you get something back from paint or powder coat. Um, even if the shop does a good job of uh, protecting uh, bolt threads, uh, you still really need to run a thread chaser through it and clean everything up and make sure that there's no paint or sandblast media or anything like that in there. What I usually use to do this is called a thread chaser. Um, some guys like to use a, a thread tap. Uh, thread taps are very, very high carbon and brittle and they do a lot of cutting and if you don't get it quite right, you can cause more problems than you started with. This is a thread chaser, which is something like a tap, but is designed to clean up threads and this tool is considerably softer steel than a, or less brittle steel than a tap uh, and is less prone to breakage. It has more reliefs in it for dropping chaff out the sides and uh, I use it on this little electric drill at a relatively low torque so that uh, it goes quickly, but we don't run the risk of breaking the tool. Um, and then what we're doing is just blowing through each of these four mounting holes for the 
uh, brake caliper and brake uh, disc mounting plate. Uh, this is my hilarious Great Jane who found her bed unsatisfactory and was pawing at it madly for a second there. Of course, as soon as she gets her picture taken, she gets shy. Uh, so we're going to take this tap, uh, or thread chaser rather, on the light duty electric drill and use a lowish torque setting, maybe half or two thirds of the available torque. And then I also, as I'm, I'm using the tool, I'm judicious with the throttle and you just start off real slow and make sure, it's, make sure that it's threaded straight and then run it through to make sure that there are no munged up threads or paint in, uh, in the threads or any other kind of contaminants that are gonna cause a problem for a bolt going through it. You can see that it's going through nice and smooth. Truth be told, I've already done this once on these things when it occurred to me, oh, you know what? This is something that I always tell people to do and they look at me a little cross-eyed and they don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, and it saves a bunch of grief down the road. So you just run that and I generally will go through it twice and see what happens if I don't get it lined up perfectly, it just stops right there, right? So you back it off and try it again. And then you find your correct thread and you run it all the way through. I like to put my finger on the back side of it there uh, and then back it. Oops. And then back it right on out of there. So those have already been done, so they're not super messy. Uh, maybe we'll get to the other strut and uh, I haven't done that one yet. Uh, the other thing I like to do is, uh, this is a little reaming tool that is designed for uh, cleaning up the edge of sheet metal after you drill it. This little cutter is on a bearing and it spins around and it's got uh, a linear blade that goes along the length of it. So you can see how there's like a crust of, of flaky paint around that six millimeter bolt hole. And then we get this guy in there. And that gives us that nice beveled edge on the hole there and gets rid of all this paint that's right there that would otherwise get sucked into the threads. And you, if it doesn't make your life difficult putting it together, it definitely makes it difficult for the next guy that has to take it apart. Okay, so that's all of that stuff. A few little shreds of paint there. I might even touch that with uh, a file and uh, that one okay so we're back to the eight millimeters to get the steering arm on the bottom of the strut oh, see it bound up on that paint already I don't think it's cross threaded so you got to fight your way through that paint and crud and in this case it didn't even make it to the bottom so you would go in and out several times. See, even that is not fully bottoming out. So we're gonna put this guy on there. It's, I don't like to, if, if it's gonna resist me, I don't like using the power tool just so that you can feel how much resistance is coming at you. But once you get the thread a little bit cleaned up, uh, then uh, go back to this light duty drill there that's bottomed out and I'm drawing it all the way out the video I don't know how the, well the video picks up 100 mile an hour flying crumbs but a bunch of crud just blew out of the bottom of that thing uh, see now it goes in nice and smooth comes out nice and smooth
that's going a little sideways there. But with the drill on super low torque, you basically can't really do any real damage. See, you just got to get it straightened out past that one little stupid piece of paint. And just imagine if the strut was already hanging in the bottom of the car out of the fender well, and you're sitting there trying to get the pitman arm underneath the strut, you're trying to thread something in there, and oh, I can't get this thing, it's not thrown, and then you wind up cross-threading it. So that's why this st extra step, even though this is, what am I going on? I'm going on 25 minutes. Um, it can save a huge amount of time during assembly. little six mils. And this is useful, for example, when we get an engine uh, block back from the machinist. Um, you know, the, the engine block's been through the hot tank and the bead blaster and then the shot peener and, and. And so we go through after we clean the block and prep it for paint, then you paint it all. And then you'll go and do the same run of, uh, you know, you got your six, eight, 10 millimeter thread chasers. And, you know, it takes a good solid 30, 45 minutes to go through each and every hole in the engine block and clean up the threads. And uh, it's a little bit painstaking, but it's the kind of thing that's the difference between having a, a smooth engine build and a, and a giant pain in your butt. Cause, oh, whoops, that thread is messed up and now we gotta stop. and repair the threads, time certain, however you gotta deal with it. Uh, but uh, this, uh, a little bit of extra effort going in uh, saves you a lot of grief on the backside. Uh, beautiful stuff. Uh, over the next day or two, we're gonna be getting that chassis back in the shop and uh, we'll shoot some videos of hanging this stuff in the car.